Okay folks, today's recipe is uh, creme de mur, which is uh, a blackberry liqueur. So you start with blackberries. Um, this recipe works equally well with the same measurements of raspberries, in which case it's creme de framboise, or blackcurrants, in which case it's creme de cassis. Um, if you do use any of the uh, farmed fruit rather than just wild blackberries, then don't get the stuff from a supermarket in those hermetically sealed long lasting packs. You need the fruit that you've either picked yourself or has been sitting around in an open punnet because the yeasts that grow wild on the skin of the fruit are a vital part of the process, as you'll see later. Okay folks, because of the way this is made, what you need to do is uh, get a Tupperware and a fork. But to help keep uh, infection from unwanted fungus and stuff like that away, you just need to school it, school it, which involves pouring boiling water on it. Uh, a little bit steamy, but uh, you get the principle. That will sterilise the inside of your Tupperware. I'll clean the lens and then we'll come back. Okay, clean lens. Uh, list of ingredients, um, freshly picked blackberries, not washed, and uh, just picked over, make sure they're all pretty good, get the spiders out, uh, sugar, and um, cheap vodka. Okay, first thing to do, weigh the blackberries. And that is... Uh, 351, call it 350 grams. Now you need to remember that. So, make a note where you're not going to lose it of uh, how many blackberries you got. Right, there we go. 350 grams of blackberries, sterile fork, sterile Tupperware, and now you just mash them and you need to do that for quite a while so once they're mashed i'll come back right as you can see that's after about five minutes but well and truly mashed that's all you do just mash it until it's absolutely soft squishy pulp then you take your fork out you put your lid on And 350 grams of mashed blackcurrants you just leave somewhere at room temperature until tomorrow. Okay, it's tomorrow and uh, they've been sitting there for about 24 hours. Uh, when you open the lid you can uh, smell the fermentation beginning which is why you don't want packaged ones, you want fresh ones so the yeast start that process. So after 24 hours you just mash it and give it a stir, let some of the CO2 out, let some of the oxygen in, using a scalded fork for sterility again, sorry it's so dark, uh, and then after doing that, that's all you need, in 30 seconds of it just to give it a stir, you uh, put the lid on and leave it till tomorrow again. See you then. Okay, so day three. So basically all that fruit has been stewed in its own juice, room temperature, mashed a couple of times for two days. So this is why we marked how much it weighed. So we had 350 grams of fruit. So after two days of that, you take exactly the same weight, 350 grams of just granulated white sugar. And you add that. And then you just mash it all in. Okay, so that's the sugar mashed in. Again, you use a scalded fork just to keep as many bugs out as possible. As you stir it, you'll still feel it being a bit gritty, but that doesn't matter. The sugar will dissolve eventually in the final step. Um, mashing it sort of destroyed the pectin y glueiness of it a bit, which is normal. Basically now you have a 
very sweet, sickly sweet puree of fruit and sugar. Uh, and that's it for today. Put the lid on, leave it again at room temperature and uh, you leave it for two days. You mash it again if you want but basically you leave it for two days. If you look closely, I don't know if you can see that, there were little bubbles coming to the surface. That's the fermentation happening. Um, this is why as I say you've got to have fruit that hasn't been packed in those supermarket tubs because you need the wild yeast. What they're doing is, it's not the alcohol we want, but the enzymes they produce um, start breaking down all the cell walls and allowing the juices to release. I don't know if you can see them, but it is bubbling and fizzing. You notice, particularly after adding the sugar, when you take the lid off, it really smells of fermentation. Fruity, slightly alcoholic. Um, but that's it. Pretty easy. Leave it until uh, two days of this has passed. Okay folks, final day, final stage. Uh, you need a saucepan with a lid, you need vodka, and you need your mashed mixture of fruit and sugar. So, 350 grams of fruit gave 350 grams of sugar, and means we need 350 millilitres of uh, cheap vodka. That just so happens to be half a bottle. So, everything vodka, and the fruit sugar puree pips skins everything goes in to the saucepan right everything in the saucepan give it a bit of a stir to mix it all up then we put the lid on put it on high heat and bring it to the boil as fast as we can obviously with the lid on because we don't want to lose that alcohol and as soon as it's come to the boil take it off the heat and just let it cool still covered and uh, till it's room temperature okay final stage uh, when it's cool push it through a sieve um, you'll see you keep all the pips and the skin and stuff like that the solid stuff you don't want uh, quite a lot of that comes out push it through the sieve and um, you've got the liquid which is your fruit liqueur Right, job done. That's it. Uh, strained, throw the pips away, uh, and you see you get about um, twice as much as you do of the vodka you put in. So, you know, it's probably about 15-16% alcohol, and uh, it tastes delicious. Uh, you have it over ice as an aperitif if you want. You can have it uh, sipped after a big meal and if you're the sort of person who likes sparkling wine Prosecco or Carver or Champagne you put a shot of that in the glass before you top it up with your sparkling wine and you make a take on uh, Quai Royale uh, as I say that's made with blackberries I've made it with blueberries, blackcurrants, raspberries and they're all delicious not sure about stone fruit so if anyone cares to try it with apricots or plums or peaches um, and gives it a go, let me know what it's like. I think if I can find gooseberries at the market uh, in the next couple of weeks, I'm going to try it with gooseberries. Should be tasty, won't be such a nice colour. Anyway, credit for the recipe goes to Madame Claudine Vonnet, who gave me the recipe many years ago, which is why it's in French metric measurements. And uh, good luck, enjoy it, and uh, cheers.